So you are a project director, mm -hmm. and what is what are the what are you working on right now? So right now um, I'm working on a variety of different projects. One is a project in uh, central Illinois, working with farmers. Um, we've you've heard probably about the uh, Gulf of Mexico hypoxia issue, which is um, the nutrients from uh, ostensibly from farmland in the Midwest and points north along the Mississippi River are making their way to the Gulf of Mexico and as it creates these big algae blooms and as the algae blooms it, it, and as the algae dies it's, it takes up a lot of the oxygen in uh, the Gulf of Mexico so that's detrimental to the fish and um, the you know the different aquatic populations there in the Gulf of Mexico and they think that's being caused by runoff from farms in the Midwest um, and, and again all the way through the Mississippi River Basin that drain down to um, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. So as we think about that, you know, so it's so we're obviously losing nutrients um, from the farms to the streams in, in you know in Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, um, the, and those those nutrients eventually make their way down to the Gulf of Mexico and are causing these problems. So so it behooves us as an agriculture industry to do a better job of you know being more efficient with our nutrient use. I mean we understand I think that um, when you think about um, nutrients that crops need corn in particular needs a lot of nitrogen to um, to grow and so as we feed that crop nitrogen um, we realize also that this is a leaky system that when we get water you know uh, from the air we get precipitation nitrogen often moves through the soil profile into the tile drains and into the water systems so um, as we you know we, we need to do a better job of, of um, of uh, timing our, our um, fertilizer inputs to our crops so that we're maximizing uptake by the crop, minimizing those opportunities for fertilizer to get into that soil profile and escape into the water systems. And so that's what we're doing in this project in, in central Illinois. Uh, it's a small stream, about 52,000 acres called Indian Creek, and we're working with the local soil and water conservation district and the local USDA folks and uh, um, a, a group of interested farmers in that area to initiate a project in that watershed that um, helps farmers be educated about the practices that are good for nutrient use efficiency. And so we're using more of those nutrients in the crop, losing less to the water. It's also important in that watershed because that watershed is a, a drinking water stream. It's a source of drinking water uh, eventually for uh, the cities of Streeter and Pontiac in Illinois. So over 25,000 residents rely on drinking water from that stream um, that, that you know may, so it's part of a larger stream system, but from that stream, um, you know, they rely on that for their municipal water use. So, you know, anything we can do to help prevent those kinds of things, nutrients, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus from getting down to those intake plants, um, that's less, less work that has to be done by the treatment plants to, to make that water suitable for human use. So, um, so that's one thing we're doing. We're working with farmers and a local steering committee of farmers and other landowners there in that watershed to demonstrate best practices and um, encourage adoption of best practices. And then um, over a, the term of the project, we're measuring water quality to see if we've made an impact in um, you know, protecting that water quality because we're using these best practices. And so, um, Another project I work on, again, this goes back to nutrient use and to agriculture, but um, cover crops. Cover crops are um, plants that are planted after, um, well, they're, they're grown typically in the time between harvest and planting. So we, over winter, we plant cover crops. Cover crops can help uptake um, some of the unused nitrogen and phosphorus that's in the soil. Also helps protect the soil from er erosion. Um, it can help build organic matter in the soil um, for the future year's crops. And really organic matter in the soil is where the magic happens. That's um, the, where a lot of the nutrients are held. That's where a lot of the water is stored. So if we can increase the organic matter, we're increasing the quality of the soil. And so as we, as we, as we work to increase the quality of the soil, we're, we're increasing the efficiency that, of, of the farming operation. So that may mean uh, more efficient use of nitrogen we're talking about, you know, also the encouraging the microbes in the soil that um, break the nitrogen down, the nat nitrogen that's native in the soil to help it more available to the plants um, and phosphorus as well. So it's a lot of good things about cover crops, but our, the work we've done revolved around um, trying to gain a better understanding of how farmers are using cover crops and what industry and what 
um, you know, government and other educators might do to help encourage farmers to use cover crops because it's a fairly simple practice um, that um, really can pay big benefits if, if done correctly. So um, we've done conducted for the last three years a survey a national survey of farmers that assesses you know what kind of cover crops they're using um, sort of their cover crop use whether it's increasing decreasing um, and also some of the different ways they're using cover crops on their farm to help improve um, soil and water quality and also thinking about how how they're using cover crops and what their what benefits they're gaining from using those cover crops so you know helping to educate ourselves and other farmers about cover crops and and um, their benefits overall. So that's the other thing I'm working on. And another thing we work with is, um, this is a new project, working with, um, it's kind of the supply chain. Um, so, you know, the, the, the different uh, supp agriculture supply chain from the farmer to the market, um, you know, how we, how we kind of work through that system and all those, um, the, the pieces along there and how we can become more sustainable as farmers and more um, uh, efficient in our farming system. So th there's a tool that's put out by uh, another nonprofit group called Field to Market that um, helps farmers to assess their, um, their carbon footprint, their, um, their conservation status, if you will. And then if they, um, they can run that tool and sort of gives them an assessment of what their, the conservation on their farm operation looks like. And so then as they, and it will also give them recommendations to other practices that they could use on their farm that would help them improve that, um, improve their conservation score and their sustainability score. And so as we come back and we think about that, we can work with farmers to use that tool to, um, to assess their operations, look at options for them to um, expand and, and do things differently that would be more efficient and more sustainable. And then um, think about running the tool again a few years down the road to see what kind of improvements they've made and so sort of working towards that continuous improvement of farmers as they work from where they are to a more sustainable system i think you know it, it kind of if we look at sustainability and one of the problems with sustainability is that we we don't know how to define it and it, everybody defines it differently and so um we need to look at sustainability as a journey rather than a destination and so continuously kind of working towards a point where we're doing a better job as we're using science and technology to guide us and using new practices and new ideas to become more efficient with our farming systems and better at um, using nutrients better with our overall farming systems so that we're doing a better job protecting soil and water quality excellent so okay. those are three of the things that we're working on the other thing that i work on is the national uh, conservation tillage survey again that's just kind of assessing um, what kind of tillage systems farmers are using uh, and um, you know again kind of learning and encouraging um, more efficient more higher residue farming systems that are good for soil and water quality